no, no, no. You do not have to cover your entire head when you sneeze. Just your nose and mouth would be sufficient. Although, honestly, now that I think of it, it might just be an improvement in your case. Hi, I'm Joe Alden, MD, also known as Dr. Bones, the Disaster Doctor, and I am a geezer on the go, a codger with a calling, a fossil with a fixation. And you know what that fixation is? That is to keep you and your family healthy in any disaster. I'm also the co-author, along with my lovely wife, Nurse Amy, of the Amazon bestseller in survival skills and safety first aid, The Survival Medicine Ham, a book that assumes that the rescue helicopter is just not on the way. This is TD, the famous African gray parrot, known all over the neighborhood, I guess. And uh, then, of course, there's this guy who is just not feeling up to snuff today. I am so sorry to see it. You know, flu season is just around the corner, and I think we should talk about how you can prevent the flu from being an issue in good or bad times. Influenza hospitalizes 200,000 U.S. citizens every year and kills 35,000 of them. As a person medically responsible for your people in a survival scenario, it's your duty to do everything you can to prevent infectious disease from running rampant among your people. An ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. It's never been more true than in survival circumstances. You will have limited medical supplies and medications to combat what could affect every member of your family, including yourself. Therefore, it makes sense to do everything in your power to prevent the problem in the first place. Influenza strikes those that are not in the best of condition, so do your best to be healthy before a disaster hits. Some of the basic steps are make good nutrition a part of your lifestyle, get enough sleep, be physically active to build up your strength and stamina, dump Bad habits like smoking, which make your lungs weaker and more prone to infection. Statistics show that influenza infects a higher percentage of smokers than non-smokers. A strong index of suspicion is a good weapon in your fight to keep your people healthy. Watch your members closely for signs of flu symptoms. These include a fever of 100 degrees Fahrenheit, uh, or slightly less than 38 degrees centigrade, a cough, a sore throat, nasal congestion, runny nose, headaches, muscle aches, chills, fatigue, malaise, malaise that's uh, queasy, sort of queasiness, and in some cases, especially in children, nausea and vomiting, and even diarrhea. So these are some of the things that you should be looking out for. You may not be certain that what you're observing is the flu or common cold. It's difficult to make the diagnosis. Mostly it is a matter of degree, but I do talk about this uh, in some of my articles on the website at doomandbloom.net and I will be doing a video, I promise you, on that in the very near future. It's important to build barriers against the flu vi virus. Highly contagious illnesses like the flu devastate families or mutual assistance groups that fail to make efforts to build those barriers against infection. The prepared medic will already have designated a sick room or tent in their retreat. This should be at one end of the house or the camp. The, the room or tent should have a door or a flap to separate the sick from the healthy, but should have good ventilation. That is a very, very important. If you fail to designate this room now, you will most likely be evicting someone in your group from their living space when someone gets sick. This will be a sure recipe for discord at a time when everyone needs to pull together. So think about that. Every resource that provides information on avoiding the flu tells you to avoid sick people, but as the medic, this is not an option for you. You have to have a good supply of protective masks as part of your medical stockpile. Use the simple ear loop mask for the flu victims themselves, and you, the medic, should be using N95 respirator masks. The strategy will help stop germ-laden viruses from infecting the caregiver. Although maintaining good hygiene will be a challenge and a collapse, there are some simple strategies that can be employed to make it tougher for viruses to do their damage. One, frequent hand washing. That's the cornerstone to preventing spread of influenza or really any other infection. Always wash your hands with soap and warm water before and after 
any patient contact. If water availability is an issue, make sure you have stockpiled lots of alcohol-based hand sanitizer. Two, use disinfectants to clean all surfaces in the sick room or any counter surfaces that are used to prepare food. A good supply of disinfectant solution and wipes is part and parcel of your medical storage. If you don't have it, get it. Three, discourage family members from touching their nose, mouth, or eyes. This drives me crazy. This happens a lot more than you think. Just observe any kid for 30 minutes and count the times that they touch their face. You'll be surprised at how quickly this happens and how frequently this happens. Hands to the face equals viral particles into the body. Four, don't be reluctant to have your group wear masks in the midst of a flu epidemic. It's rare in the U.S., but wearing masks in a situation like this is considered a sign of social responsibility in many other regions of the world. Five, teach your people to cough or sneeze with a tissue or cloth at all times. If none are available, sneeze into the upper arm rather than the hands. Right, bud? Good. Six, dispose of tissues used by sick patients. Don't leave them around for other people to touch. Bedding and utensils used by flu victims should always be sterilized before reuse. Seven, and finally, in normal times, consider flu vaccination before every flu season. This is controversial among many in the preparedness community. The flu vaccine will be effective, though, as long as the current flu virus is similar to last year's. The va vaccine uses last year's viral proteins in its production. If this year's flu is genetically different from last year's, the vaccine's effectiveness will be limited. In general, you can expect about 60 to 70 percent success in avoiding the flu if you get the vaccine. Having said this, the Center for Disease Control recommends yearly flu vaccination. The reasoning is that more people's lives are saved by the vaccine than have complications from its administration. To give an example, a serious neurological disorder called Guillain-Barre syndrome occurs more frequently in those who take the flu vaccine, but the increased risk is about 1 in 100,000. Weighing the risks against the benefits of any treatment, whether it's a vaccine or any other medication, is part of the CDC's recommendation process. This is Joe Alton, MD, also known as Dr. Bones of doomandbloom.net, wishing you the best of health in good times or bad. Hope you feel better, buddy. You still in there? <laughs>